Hello, and welcome back to Avocet Math. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Diophantine equations and do a brief recap on the type of equations that I refer to as uh, factorable equations. And these are probably the more straightforward of the, uh, the types of Diophantine equations. And uh, the thing I wanted to point out is that when you're dealing with factorable equations, the very nature of uh, factoring expressions means that you're dealing with numbers that uh, divide evenly. And by evenly, I mean uh, no, no fractions left over. And this seems like an obvious statement, but uh, you have to keep this in mind uh, during your problem solution. Uh, sometimes it's easy to lose track of the simple things. And, and I just wanted to point this out because when you're dealing with numbers that divide evenly, it means that you can tap into the fundamental theorem of arithmetic to compare uh, integer factors and their exponents and uh, draw all kinds of very powerful uh, conclusions about the problem at hand. And the way I like to look at this is once you're tapping into the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, you're pretty much in the fast lane for solving uh, a Diophantine problem. And that often will lead you to a solution in a reasonable amount of time. Now, uh, I would say that uh, the bulk of the AMC questions, perhaps uh, 80 percent, uh, certainly 70 percent, that you're likely to encounter uh, fall into this category. So you really have to consider this as your first line of defense for uh, solving uh, Diophantine equations. Uh, you certainly uh, behooves you to look for some method to factor the equations because that is by far the most powerful technique that you're going to have in your toolbox to, to address the types of problems that you're likely to encounter in the AMC. But for problems that are not factorable, uh, equations that are not factorable, by which I mean that no matter how you manipulate the equations, no matter how you massage the left or the right side of the equation, no matter what type of variable substitution uh, you try to employ, uh, you find that uh, the equations that you're left with just do not factor in any shape or form. And uh, uh, conversely to the first statement, uh, when you're dealing with uh, equations that are not factorable, you're dealing essentially with numbers uh, that don't divide evenly. And again, this is somewhat of an obvious statement, but uh, keep that as in mind. Um, and in terms of uh, equations that are not factorable, as I think I mentioned in a previous video, uh, the equation that comes to mind for me and is the one you're most likely to encounter in the uh, AMC and the AIM level of testing is what I refer to as the uh, general uh, linear two-variable equation. And two examples of that would be uh, for instance, uh, 2x plus 3y equals 7, for example, or 7x plus 13y equals 71, for example. And uh, we generally are trying to solve these types of equations in all integers, positive and negative. Um, so for the general uh, linear two-variable equation, we find that uh, these equations are inherently not factorable, and uh, that's important to, to bear that in mind. Now, it is true that uh, you can construct some linear two-variable equations that are factorable, and we'll deal with those special cases in the uh, following videos, but the general linear two-variable equation has coefficients which have really no common divisor, and there's really no way that you can group these items in any way to form useful factor groups. Um, so when we're dealing with these types of equations, we have to bear in mind that uh, at some point in the solution of these equations, we're going to get uh, pulled into the uh, whole notion of uh, division remainders. And that uh, basically uh, comes about naturally from the fact that we just don't have numbers that divide evenly. And so that's sometimes uh, expressed in the uh, in the language of what's called modular arithmetic, and that's something, again, we'll get to in a later video. 
Um, so just to, to briefly talk about these two equations, uh, we can certainly see that uh, the first equation lends itself to the solution x equals 2, y equals 1. Uh, the second equation is certainly unclear as to what the solution for that is. It's not uh, easy to spot. Uh, and the one thing that comes as a surprise to, uh, to uh, people who come across these equations for the first time is that uh, when you can find one solution to either of these equations, what that means then is that there are an infinite number of solutions. And that's uh, something we'll get into further in the following videos. So come and join me for those, and uh, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.